From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. It's Amy Bradshaw, Johnny. Amy, it's 1 a.m. Anything the matter? Yes, can you come over right away? Sure, your apartment? No, I'm in my dressing room at the Criterion Theater. At 1 o'clock in the... Amy, there's a policeman assigned to you. Is he with you? No, I, I went out the back way. I came over here alone. But why? He's supposed to be protecting you. Johnny, I can't explain now, but I think I finally know who's been trying to kill me. I want to talk to you right away over here. Hurry. Please hurry. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> New York City, expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Northwestern Indemnity Alliance, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Amy Bradshaw matter. Expense account item 12, $5. Taxi from my hotel to the Criterion Theater on West 44th. Two bucks for the fare, three bucks for getting me there in five minutes. Amy had sounded plenty scared over the phone. The cab skidded to a stop in front. I caught a glimpse of somebody at the other corner of the theater. It looked like Porter Kane. I couldn't be sure and I didn't have time to find out right now. Backstage, it was quite dark, and I had to feel my way through some... The shot came from the direction of Amy's dressing room. Mike Pomeroy, her agent, was lying on the floor, dead. There was a gun on the floor, too, just inside the door. Johnny! Oh, Johnny! What happened, Amy? Amy, stop it! Tell me what happened. The, the door! Door? The, the shot! It, it came from the door! I ran outside the dressing room across the stage into the alley. No one in sight. Back inside, I found a light switch. So I phoned Al Centella at police headquarters, told him what had happened. Amy was quieter now. Johnny. Amy, look, look. I know it's tough for you to talk right now, but you've got to try and tell me. I know. A little after midnight, Mike called me at my apartment. He said he wanted to talk to me about something important. His office is nearby, and he asked me to meet him here in my dressing room. So I came over right away. Go on. Mike and I started talking. Suddenly I saw the door opening a crack. A hand with a gun. Mike. Mike. Easy, easy. Mike saw it too. He, he dove in between me and the door. And collected the slug. He, he fell against the door and it slammed on the hand. The gun dropped, and the next thing I remember, you were in the room. You didn't see who was holding the gun? No, just the hand. Amy. And there was something on one of the fingers that I recognized. A large signet ring? Yes. Yeah. It belonged to the guy out on the sidewalk, Porter Kane. <laughs> We will continue with the Bradshaw matter in a moment. Friends, how'd you like to thrill your favorite youngster with some of the most exciting toys of the year? Picture the breathless excitement of any child surrounded by six gaily colored balloon-like giant animals up to three feet long, and all for the low, low price of just one dollar. Now, first you get Bounce-O the Clown with round pot belly and funny nose. Next comes Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo. Third, there's Roscoe the Roller Skating Bear. He's two feet tall and looks almost like real. Fourth, there's Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman. And fifth, Mortimer the Giant Mouse, 18 inches long and sure to scare the whiskers off any cat. That's five different giant animals. But now, hold your breath for the most sensational toy of all, the star of the whole Christmas season, the jolly giant talking Santa Claus, guaranteed to make everybody's Christmas a merrier one. He's a big roly poly happy Santa. He stands erect on two legs, is actually over three feet tall and 32 inches around. Best of all, he actually talks. Just pull the tape and he says, Merry Christmas for all to hear. He's the biggest, merriest talking as Santa ever. Sure to please your youngsters and spread good cheer. Yes, giant Santa proves there really is a Santa Claus. 
That's a total of six giant animals made of brightly colored, preformed, sturdy latex, which the kids can easily inflate. And the cost? Just one dollar, not for each, just one dollar for all six of these lovable giants who'll turn your home into a circus parade. And here's a surprise. Mail your order today and you'll also receive absolutely free Peter the Rabbit, actually over two feet tall with big red ears almost nine inches long. But you must send now. Rush $1 plus 10 cents for packing and mailing for each set you want to Giant Animals, Box 1918, Grand Central Station, New York City. If not delighted with every one of your seven giant animals, return them to the Super Animals Company for a full refund. But keep the giant talking set as our gift. Order now. Supplies are limited. Rush $1.10 for packing and mailing for each set in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1918, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents with your name and address. Mail to Giant Animals, Box 1918. That's Box 1918, Grand Central Station, New York City. Giant Animals, Box 1918, Box 1918, Grand Central Station, New York City. Lieutenant Centella arrived at Amy's dressing room, and Amy repeated her story to him. He sent a couple of his boys out to pick up Porter Kane. Al and Amy and I went down to headquarters. We left her in one room while we went into another to question Kane, who had been picked up at his apartment. See here, Lieutenant, I don't know what this is all about, but I certainly object to being routed out Just of... hold it, Kane. You know why you're down here. I certainly do not. You don't know that Mike Pomeroy's dead, huh? Amy's agent? Really? Really. Well, I never did like that chap. Quite an insensitive person. Well, he's real insensitive now, Kane. He's dead. How did it happen? Mike was shot by mistake. The real target was Amy. Good heavens, no. When's the last time you saw Amy? The night before last. I spoke to her briefly after the show. You haven't talked to her on the telephone? No. You're lying. Now, see here, Dollar. You phoned her at her apartment about 11 p.m. I was there. All right. I did telephone her. I suggested she meet me somewhere. I, I told her I'd wait for her outside her apartment. Go on. I saw her come out later by the alley, so I followed her to the theater, thinking she meant for us to talk there. But then I I heard a shot. So you admit being in the vicinity? Well, yes, but I definitely did not go into the theater. Didn't you? Kane, Amy got a look at the hand holding the gun. There was a ring on one of the fingers. Ring? Your ring. But she's completely mistaken. That's a very distinctive ring. It's not one that anybody be mistaken about. See here, Lieutenant, all of this, this wild supposition is based on the assumption that I had a motive for wanting to kill Amy. You told me what your motive was when I talked to you last evening in your apartment. What do you mean? I asked you what you'd do if you wanted something for your collection and couldn't get it. You told me a story about what happened when you were just a kid nine years old. But I, I Another say... Another kid had a lollipop you wanted. He wouldn't give it to you, so you smashed it. And that's what you were trying to do tonight in Amy's dressing room. You couldn't have her, so you tried to smash her. There wasn't much point in my hanging around. So I got Al Sintella's permission to take Amy back to her apartment. We could wait there for any new developments. Amy didn't say a word all the way. When we got there, she sat in a chair staring at the wall. When she finally spoke, it was more like she was talking to herself. He's dead. Amy. He's dead because of me. Stop talking that way. Mike Pomeroy jumped in the way of a bullet. If he hadn't, you'd be dead. It would have been better that way. Stop it, Amy. Johnny. Yeah. I think... You think what? Oh, just a minute. I'll get it. It was Al Centella down at police headquarters. When he finished talking, I didn't say anything. There wasn't anything to say. After I hung up, I stood there a moment, staring out the window. It had started to rain. I felt old and tired and empty and sick. I went back into the other room again. Amy was sitting there, looking at me. Johnny? Yeah, Amy? Was that call for me? No. Who was it? Lieutenant Centella. Oh. The gun that killed Mike Pomeroy. There were no fingerprints on it. You said you saw a bare hand with a ring on it holding the gun. A bare hand would have left fingerprints. You killed him, didn't you? Yes, Johnny. The attempts on your life, you faked them, didn't you, to convince people you were in danger so you could kill Pomeroy and we'd think the shot was intended for you. Why, Amy? You know why. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. You loved Mike. You knew he was growing away from you. Very fast. You saw him get interested in a younger actress. 
You knew she was taking your place with him. To Mike, I was dead. I couldn't stand that. I really couldn't. So I started making it look like I was in danger. It wasn't very hard, Johnny. I'm a good actress. Yeah. After a while, I almost began to believe I was in danger. But something was after me. It was hunting me. It finally caught up with me, and I... did what I did. Which of us is the hunter, Johnny? And which is the hunted? Amy. Yes? I think one of Lieutenant Centella's men is waiting for you out in the hall. All right. Just one thing, Johnny. What is it? I'll need something now. Something. Don't forget me, Johnny. Give me that. That you can count on, Amy. She walked out of the room, and she didn't look back. I'm glad she didn't. Expense account item 13, $16.50. Transportation and incidentals from New York back to Hartford. Expense account total, $185.20. End of account, end of report. Remarks? Amy repeated her confession to Lieutenant Centella. Her trial's coming up soon. Sweet case. Well, tomorrow's another day. So they tell me. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar will return in a moment to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Friends, send for your set of some of the most exciting toys of the year. Six giant inflatable toys for only one dollar. Some up to three feet tall. You get Bounceo the Happy Clown, Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo, Roscoe the two feet long roller skating bear, Whitey the fat indoor snowman, Mortimer the giant mouse 18 inches long, and last but not least, the great giant talking Santa. A roly-poly giant over three feet tall and 32 inches around the belly that actually says Merry Christmas out loud when you pull the tape. That six sensational giant toys for only one dollar, made of sturdy, gaily colored latex that the kids can easily inflate. Send one dollar for each set to Giant Animals, Box 1918, Grand Central Station, New York City. And if you order right now, you get Peter the Rabbit over two feet tall absolutely free. If not delighted with your giant animals, your money refunded immediately. Order today. You may never hear this offer again. Rush $1 plus 10 cents for packing and mailing and cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1918, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents for each set with your name and address to Giant Animals, Box 1918, Grand Central Station, New York City. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's exciting story. Next week... A case with a great big question mark. Accident, suicide, or just plain murder? Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Florence Walcott, Don Diamond, Larry Thor, Vic Perrin, and Carlton Young. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>